Hey guys, welcome back to my garage. In this video, I've got the back panel installed on the uh, milling machine. Uh, so first things first, I'm gonna go kind of give you a, a, a walk around of the back side, showing you the panel and the things that were added since you saw the panel on the bench. Of course, I've got all my motors mounted up. They bolted right up in reverse order that the steppers came off, so there's not much to see there. I've got cables hooked up. Um, they're not routed yet, but they're all hooked up. So, uh, and then I've got my spindle motor on, and underneath this hood, it's a 3D printed hood with a fan on top, just blowing air through. Um, I have a, an encoder uh, mounted to the shaft of the motor. The motor is belted to the spindle at one to one with a timing belt. So while I had the motor apart for bearings, I went ahead and chucked up the rotor and uh, drilled and reamed for the encoder sh shaft. And then once that was in, I loctited it in place. And then I finished turned the, uh, the little stub to fit the encoder. Um, I had a 2000 line encoder. You really only need a 1000 line encoder. Uh, for a uh, spindle and one of the things you want to look for when you do a spindle encoder is make sure that the encoder itself is rated for the RPM that you'll be running it at. Uh, so uh, usually a 1000 line line driver differential encoder is just fine for the, the spindle. But again, since from the factory that motor was belted to the spindle at one-to-one -one with a timing belt, I decided what the heck, I'll go ahead and try it and I mounted it up. Um, being a bed mill and has a draw bar, it makes it real difficult to mount encoders to these machines. So uh, I just took advantage and in a later video we'll see whether or not it'll rigid tap. All right, so let's uh, take a walk around and look at the machine, look at the, the cabinet and the back panel mounted in the cabinet and then I'll touch on a few things and then we're going to go ahead and start CNC 12 and we're going to go ahead and program it to see if we get motor movement on all three axes, actually all four axes because we've got the fourth axis right here uh, and see if we can get the spindle to turn and once we have that all set up then the next video will do uh, tuning of, of an axis um, using the ClearPath MSP software. So let's take a look around. So here's a look at uh, the x-axis servo. Again, I ordered the motors. The shaft made it up to the coupler, and uh, these were NEMA 34 motors. The old steppers were NEMA 34, so it was a direct bolt-on. There is the uh, a-axis, the fourth axis, with its little NEMA 23 motor. Again, direct bolt-up. The shaft was quarter-inch. The coupler was quarter-inch, so everything was good there. A lot of people are interested in the monitor mount and the keyboard mount. I make these. They're very simple sheet metal. Um, I had a touchscreen monitor, so I went with that. And then I use these Logitech K400 Plus uh, keyboards. They're actually meant for home theaters, but they're pretty inexpensive, and you can buy those silicone uh, keyboard covers to keep the swarf out. And with a touchpad, you don't have a, a roller ball to worry about dust and debris getting inside of it. Um, Here's the back side. PC is a Lenovo Tiny M92. Um, I buy them off of eBay. I usually try and get them with a solid state drive, 120 gigabyte at least installed. And uh, it meets the minimum qualifications for uh, CNC 12. So it's mounted back here. And then the, the tray is just 16 gauge sheet metal bent up in a lip. It's 18 inches wide. Six, in, six inches deep and then it's got a little lip here to hold the keyboard and then if you look underneath it's just another piece of sheet metal it's about six inches wide I bend it at a 45 on my small sheet metal break so to describe the way this works this this is a, a mount for the PC um, Lenovo made a mount for this PC so it slides in and out so there's screws going through that mount through its visa holes through the monitor support, the Visa monitor support, into my sheet metal, and then screwed into the monitor. So uh, there are four bolts that hold all that together. And then the arm is an inch and a quarter arm going back to the cabinet. The cabinet also has a piece of Delrin turned here. And then I don't know if you can see it, but underneath there is a piece of steel backing this thing so that that bolt is not just pulling on this flimsy sheet metal. It's supported by that steel. All right. 
So that's the monitor keyboard mount. All right, on this side, I have a, uh, an on-off switch. It's made by ABB. Um, I believe it's a OT16ET3. So that's rated for 20 amps. And uh, power comes in the top, drops out here, goes into the breaker, and then it jumps over to this breaker here, and that feeds the cabinet. The other thing installed is this Ethernet bulkhead connector. Um, it's round, I believe it's a one inch hole. You can buy these from Amazon. Uh, it is shielded, you can see the shield there, the metal jacket, that's very important. And then it comes around to this side, and you plug in, a, I think I've got a, this might be a five foot ethernet cable coming around and getting plugged into uh, Acorn. That's about it. Here's kind of an overview shot of the cabinet. Okay. Um, you'll just notice wires, cables, motor cables are just hanging out, still be neat, need to be neatened up. That's the opening for this centroid cable strain relief. Normally they're twice as long or twice as wide as this one. I cut them in half for these small machines. And then it'll go in there and allows you to, the, the cables to come up through that hole. And then you can strain relieve them by tie wrapping them using cable ties against these holes. And then you tighten that bolt and then this gasket cinches it up. Okay. Um, so yeah, and then I've got the spindle encoder hooked up right there. Oh, I found a solution to my problem. I don't know if you can see it blinking right there, that's the Y-axis servo motor. So what I did is I popped a hole in the back of the cab and I got lucky and uh, I can access the USB programming port. And as you can see, I can also take a look at the blink codes. I do have a plug that will plug this hole to keep swore from coming in the cabinet. And I'll just put a little handle on it right here, a little knob so I can pop it on and off. So uh, I took care of that. And uh, as I mentioned in the previous video, the cabinet is screwed here at the top. And then, I don't know if you can see it, there's a screw down there and another one over there. Those are both accessible. So if I have to get to the axis motor, I remove those two bolts. I remove the two bolts on top, and then I can just hinge, just lift the cabinet up, and then I can access that motor. So it shouldn't be an issue if I have to replace it, but the most important thing is I can see the blink codes, and I can access the USB port on the, uh, the servo motor there. The other thing that I did, this is where my, my home switches come in. Um, one's X, one's Y, and Z comes in from the top. You can just see it on the inside there. I routed Z around and down, and I routed the X and Y down to this little terminal block here. And if you look closely, you can't see them, but the, the, the uh, X, Y, and Z pairs are all landed on this little terminal block. And then I put jumpers on, on two and three and four and five. And then this one is going to COM, and this is going to my input one, which is home all. So I'm seriesing them all right here, and because the terminal box here, if I have to check a, a limit switch, I can, I can test them here by just disconnecting these wires and opening them up, but right now they're in series. So COM comes in here, goes out to a switch, comes back, comes out, goes out to a switch, comes back, comes out, and then goes up to the last switch, and then it comes back, and that goes to, uh, to the home all input. So that covers the switches. All right, I still have some holes that I got a plug from the old the old setup, we've got this hole, I'll just sheet metal, put a piece of sheet metal on it to clean that up. And there's a couple over here, I'll sheet metal those up too. And uh, there is a cooling fan that goes here, that's what these wires are for, they're plugged, and this is 240 volts. And uh, those fans are protected by a quarter amp fuse in each one of these fuse holders, so the two fans are are being fed from that those pair of fuse holders. Okay, um, probe connector. Um, that cable is also wired up to Acorn. I got that taken care of. And the e-stop button is wired up to Acorn. We've already covered the contacts on that. Um, the probe connector, um, you can download the schematic for the DP4TT1 schematic and it'll go over uh, how you land those wires on Acorn. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, we've got to configure um, CNC 12 for the home all input. We've got to invert the e-stop button input. Um, we've also got to check axis direction 
And uh, one of the things, so I'll be cheating a little bit, because this machine was done before with Acorn, with the steppers, um, I saved my report. And if you look at your report.zip file, inside, of, inside that file there'll be a report. Uh, also a report file with the same name as a text file. You can open it and print it out and it has all your machine parameters in it. So I printed it out so I have a head start. I know what all my, uh, my turns ratios are. I know what my backlash comp settings are. Um, I know what my travels are so we can prog program all that stuff in here uh, to get it going. So let's get CNC 12 started and, uh, and go from there. Okay, let's go ahead and start up CNC 12. All right, so the first thing we want to do is if I push the e-stop button right here, if I push this e-stop button, it's already pushed. So. I released it and it says emergency stop detected so it's backwards. If you remember I didn't have a physical e-stop button when we we're bench testing and now we do so we have to invert that input. So let's go into the wizard F7 utility F10 wizard. I'm going to go ahead and reassert the e-stop. We're going to go up here to input definitions and we're going to click this means normally open the red is normally open we're going to click on it and that means normally closed okay. All right, so uh, that takes care of that. Let's go to uh, output definitions. No fault out is still uh, selected. And we're gonna want to set uh, outputs four, five, and six to spindle forward is gonna be four. Let's see if we get that right. Going from memory here. Spindle reverse is gonna be on output five and VFD reset out is going to be on output six. That takes care of that. All right, one of the other things, so that takes care of all our outputs. Uh, I've got to go back to inputs. And I've got to put spindle OK in here. And spindle OK, spindle OK is on six. So we're going to put spindle OK on 6, whoops, got to be careful you grab the right one. You, you left click hold and then go straight to the right and it's on 6, OK? Now that should take care of my inputs and outputs. Let's go to axis configuration. All right, steps per revolution stays at 6400, our overall turns ratios and I already fine-tuned them, it's going to be 5.0819 for X, 5.081 for Y, Z is 5.0792 and uh, the A axis is a seven, it's a it's a 72 uh, turns per rev um, worm. So we take 72 divided by 360 and it comes out to 0.2. And we're going to up our max rates to 100 for now. I'm going to up the, the max rate on the A axis to 1800. And then fast jog we'll leave at 50 and then we're going to change the slow jogs to 20. So, so it'll home a little bit faster. Whoops. I tried to put in 200 instead of 20. 20. Tab. 20. Tab. 20, tab, and we'll make the slow, I'm going to make this fast jog, 1800 as well, on the A, and I'm going to make 
just arbitrary numbers for now. I'm going to put 360 for slow jog. Excel, decel, we're all going to leave alone. Oh, we don't know what our directions are yet, so we're going to have to check those here in a minute. We've got to make sure that our axis are moving back and forth correctly. This is where you reverse them. If they're moving the wrong way, this is where you change them. Homing and travel. Wizard to generate the automatic home program based on the selections below. It's going to be automatic homing. Machine seeks home, switches to home. Hey, that reminds me. Uh, let's, uh, let's set these travel limits. So Y, I uh, see X is 11. Y is negative 6. And Z is negative 9 inches of travel. That reminds me, we didn't set our, our uh, home all. So we need to set home all to input one. Here it is right here. Drag it up, stick it on input one, okay? So that's our input definitions. I think we got them all, our outputs. Spin forward, spin reverse, v set, v, VFD reset output. No fault one. Axis config, we still have to check the directions that our axis are moving. Um, otherwise, that looks good. Oh, I know my lash is. I'm going to go ahead and set that up. Lash comp is 0 0.0008 for x. Y is 0 0.001. And z is a little bit more, 0 0.0025. All right, see everything else looks good there, except we've got to check direction reversal, homing and travel. We've got uh, 11 in the positive for X, um, negative six for Y, and negative 10 for, or negative nine, and I've got negative nine for Z. Um, we're doing automatic homing. The switch is home. The automatic homing, machine seek switches to home, and the wizard's going to generate our automatic home program based on the selections below. No axis pairing, no need to mess with advanced over here, spindle setup. <clears throat> okay, I got a 2,000 line encoder times four and quadrature is 8,000. Spindle speed on this machine should be 5,000. We'll leave minimum at 3,000. Uh, rigid tapping, uh, we have a spindle encoder and enable that. We've got to check to see if my license is installed, otherwise that won't work. Rigid tapping, PWM, probe. I'm not going to mess with probing right now. We can cover that in another video. Um, let's go ahead and write the settings to CNC 12. Say yes. Okay, must be shut down and restarted for PLC changes to apply. I'm going to click OK. It's going to prompt me to power down the Acorn board. I'm going to go back here and do that. OK, our heartbeat is up. I'm going to click OK. See if she restarts. OK, emergency stop detected. It is, it is in right now. I'm going to release it. Okay, and it says released. And I just heard the motors enabled. The e-stop relay closed, it enabled the motors, so they're enabled now. So let's see if we have movement. I'm gonna, I'm gonna jog, well right now, if you, if you see here, my table's always at, already at X minus, so I've gotta be careful. I'm gonna, I'm gonna gently jog, okay. I took a chance. So I'm pressing X minus, but it's moving in the positive direction. So we know we're going to have to uh, change the direction on X. Let's see why. Um, okay. I just came positive, so Y it came positive. Y minus. Okay, Y is moving towards the column, so we're, we're good there. It's moving in the negative direction. Let's look at uh, the Z axis. Uh, we want to go up. Nope, it's coming down. Okay, so we've got to reverse X and Z. So let's hit our E-stop. Let's go into Utility, Wizard. 
we're going to go to axis configuration. We're going to come down here to X, direction reversal under X, and we're going to click on it, and we're going to say yes to that. And then Y was okay, so on Z, we're going to come over under Z, and we're going to click on Y to yes for direction reversal, and we're going to write those settings. Yes. So that should flip the uh, axis direction. Okay, this time we don't have to power down. So settings saved, be sure to close and restart CNC 12 for all changes to take effect. We'll click OK. We're gonna go ahead and close. We're gonna exit CNC 12. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and start CNC 12 back up. But, you know, we did have motion. The axis were moving around like they were supposed to. Okay, emergency stop detected. I'm gonna go ahead and pull it. Okay, it's released. I just saw my motors uh, engage. They're flashing green. I don't know if you can see that right there, but that blinking green means the motors are enabled. So let's go ahead and test at, uh, Z in the positive, and it is moving up. Let's go X in the negative, and it is going this way, X positive, that way, and uh, let's do Y again. Okay, Y is heading in, Y positive is coming out, and again, Z is going up. All right, before we home this machine, we need to check the limit switches to make sure they're working. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into the diagnostic screen by pressing Alt-I, and you'll see up here by moving this box to input one and then if you look on the bottom row of LEDs it says it tells you input one is home all and this is a good sign because it's green right now so let me trip one one I can reach here I'm gonna trip Y okay that's good let's see if I can trip X That's good, so I'm tripping that. Now Z, I cannot reach, it's really hard to, to reach, but uh, everything looks good. Um, meaning that the, all the switches are in series, so let's go ahead and home the machine now. If I press Alt-I again, it'll say press cycle start to send machine to home position, so let's do that. Okay, Z's going up. I'm gonna do alt I. Let's watch that green LED. When it trips Z, hopefully it'll trip. Almost there. There it tripped Z, great. Now it's coming forward. It's gonna do Y. Got it. Now it's X is moving that way. Got it and it didn't set. You know why it didn't set? Because the machine, the control, is trying to home the A-axis. You can see it here turning. There's no home switch on this A-axis. We have to go in and make a couple of modifications. So as long as that's spinning, it's not gonna home because there's not gonna be a trip. In home all, it's expecting all four axis, in this case, to trip that input. And uh, we don't have a switch on that A axis. So let's hit escape. All right. I'm gonna hit Alt-I. We're gonna go in and modify the uh, home program. So we're gonna use File Explorer click on it, local disk C, we're going to go into CNCM, and we're going to look over here for the home file. Here you see the type says home file. Now I'm using Notepad++ and I've told it to, that it's okay to open uh, the .hom file as a text, and it is a text file, so let's open that. And if you look at it here, I'm going to blow this up, if you look at it here, there's Z, so it's, it's telling it to, to uh, move in the positive direction until the switch trips, and then we'll, M26 is set Z 
to zero. M92Y, same thing, move in the positive direction until the limit switch one trips. And then M26Y says so set it to zero. And then, um, and then X, M, M91X means move in the negative direction until that switch trips. And M26 is, is to set the DRO to zero. And then here you see an M20, M92A. Well, we're not going to move to a switch, so all we're going to do here is put a semicolon in front of it. So it will skip this process. It will not try and look for a switch when it, when it goes to A, but when it hits M26A, it'll go ahead and set um, the axis DRO to zero, right where it's sitting. All right, so we're going to do a file, save, and that's good. Now there's one last thing we're going to have to do. We need to go back into the wizard. And we're going to go to homing and travel. And we're going to click right here, home program creation. The wizard creates a homing macro, cncm.home, based on the selections below. This macro can be used as is or edited by the user to meet any special requirements. We edited it. We, we, we edited it out so it doesn't look for an input when it's trying, when it gets to the A axis. So now we're going to change it. I will create my own home program. Do not overwrite the CNCM home file. If we don't do that, the next time we make a change in the wizard and then we write the settings, it will put it all back the way it was, including trying to hunt for a limit switch on the A axis. By saying, I will create my own home program, which is what we did, we edited it, do not overwrite the CNCM.home file. So now we're going to write the changes. We'll say yes. Be setting save, be sure to close and restart CNC 12 for all changes to take effect. We click OK. Now we're going to go ahead and close this. We're going to go ahead and uh, exit CNC 12. OK, now we're going to go ahead and restart CNC 12. Okay, we've got a reset initiated, press reset to clear, we reset it. Now let's go ahead and um, try and rehome the machine. So I'm going to press cycle start. Okay, there's Z. Just hit Y. Just hit X. And you can see the semicolon on A, and there we go, Z DROs are set. All right. Now let's go ahead and let's check our spindle really quick. I'm going to go up here to the VCP. And I'm going to take auto spin man off. You see that LED means it's in auto mode, means the control has control over the spindle uh, from MDI or for, from running a program. We're going to go manual. So now I'm going to go ahead and hit the green button to turn the spindle on. And spindle is running. Spin, I'm checking the spindle direction. We're M3, which is forward. The spindle is turning properly. It's turning uh, in the right direction. But if you look at the spindle RPM, it's negative. So we have to go in and change this value. You see it's a negative. That means the control thinks it's actually running in reverse. So let's stop this. We'll just hit stop. Let's go into the wizard, utility, wizard. Very simple. All we do is put a minus sign in front of the encoder counts. We'll go to spindle setup right here. Put a minus in front of the 8,000, write the settings. Yes. OK. And I don't think we have to ex exit here, but let's go ahead and try this. OK, now you can see we have a positive number. So that's correct. I'm going to hit 100%. There it is. Go ahead and shut that off. So our spindle's working. Okay, let's try our movements. Let's go Z negative. Okay, Z's moving negative. Let's go X positive. X is moving positive. Let's go Y negative. Now Y is moving in the negative direction. Y is moving positive. Let's reset home. 
and it goes up, it's rehoming itself. By hitting reset home, it's forcing the machine to reset home. Okay, we're back to home. Um, so that concludes this video. I just wanted to show you the back panel wired up, kind of give an overview. I just wanted to show the back panel wired up and I wanted to give an overview of the machine working now and what, what it took to program it to, to uh, get it moving in the right directions and so forth. Um, we had to invert that e-stop input from normally open, normally close, and that's just clicking on the LED. Um, we reversed uh, was X and Z directions because they were moving in the opposite direction, so that was a simple change. Uh, we, pro we checked the home switches by manually by checking them using the diagnostic screen, which again is alt I. We checked them manually. We toggle that back off. We set the turns ratio. We set the lash compensation. We set the spindle forward, spindle reverse, and VFD reset. Uh, outputs. Um, so yeah, that pretty much covers it. So then in the next video we'll go over tuning uh, one of these clear path servos. I'm not going to tune them all, but we'll probably tune the z-axis because that's got weight on it. It turns out that I'm going to need a brake on my z. Um, there's there, this, this cylinder here, it's a nitrogen cylinder. I put it back in. Um, it's weak and it's not holding that z-axis up and it's to keep it up. Um, so I've got a brake coming and I will put that in. It, it actually is going to go between, uh, I got it from Technic. Um, it's going to go between the Z-axis motor and the uh, ball screw coupler. It goes right in between them and it uses 24 volts to turn it on and off. And we'll go over how to uh, set that up in CNC 12, the brake configuration using another output. So yeah, I had to get, I had to get a brake and uh, no, uh, it appears that for the most part Technic does not build the brake into their motors. You buy a separate brake where they stack on top of each other and we'll go over that also. We'll do that first in the next video. Um, I'll mount it up and then we'll get it in there. So, all right, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got something out of it. It was the steps after the bench test on getting everything uh, set up on the machine. I've gone over calibrating an axis. Um, if you go to the Centroid Acorn forums and search Calibrate Axis, you'll find that there is a couple of uh, chapters out of the one of the installation manuals that I've posted there you can get. It's called Course DRO Calibration and Fine DRO Calibration that helps you go over all that. Um, Mark Leonard from CNC Services Northwest created a really neat uh, file for uh, setting up for checking backlash. Um, so I'll put that in the link below so you can grab that little, it's just a G-code file and it moves the axis back and forth and it helps you determine uh, how much uh, backlash you've got and what to enter in the lash compensation tables. Alright guys, that's it. Until next time, we'll talk to you soon.